Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium. And today we're gonna talk a little more about four layer stack ups because they are so commonly recommended by different PCB manufacturers. In fact, if you go onto your favorite manufacturer's website, they'll probably have a four layer PCB stack up listed on their website. And I like to think of that stack up as the entry level stack up. First, I wanna look at a comment on one of the earlier videos that talks about four layer stack ups and it brings up some interesting points that we wanted discuss in this video. Manuel Malagón writes, very nice explanation about why to not add a ferrite to the power supply network. One big problem though, you never put a power plane on a four layer board, ever. Power is routed on a four layer board. Don't believe me? Ask Rick Hartley or Eric Bogatin. So Manuel brings up a great point and I would disagree with the assertion that you should never have a power plane on a four layer board. However, if you don't use it correctly, you can create signal integrity problems that are often talked about by folks like Rick Hartley and Eric Bogatin. And I respect both of those guys immensely. I've learned a lot from them. If you ever have a chance to read any of their articles on Altium's website or possibly in Signal Integrity Journal, you should definitely do it because you'll learn a lot. What Manuel is bringing up is actually a problem with routing and it's not necessarily with just the presence of a power plane in a four layer stack up. And he does bring up another great point, which is that you don't have to have a power plane in a four layer stack up. You could have power routed on a four layer stack up. So what we wanna do now is look at some alternative stack ups that address the signal integrity problem that he's referencing, as well as what to do with power in one of these alternative four layer stack ups. So let's get into it. So let's look at the typical four layer stack up that you're gonna get from a fabricator. So typically what you'll have, this is not the best rectangle, but hopefully you'll all follow along. Typically what you'll have is you'll have your conductors on the top and bottom, and then you'll have your two internal layers. And so when I say that these are typically given power and ground, you don't have to do this, right? I mean, you could have ground up here and power up here. You could have both of these be ground. You could have both of these be power. Technically, you can do whatever you like. They also don't have to be plane layers. Now, typically what your fabricator gives you is they give you the structure and they're not literally telling you that you have to put power here or you have to put ground here. You actually have some freedom with where you put ground, where you put power, and where you put signals on different layers. And so if you are careful with how you route through the board and around the board, you can actually be able to get power to all the components that you need, put signals across different layers, and avoid the type of signal integrity problem that was referenced in the question. I'm gonna address the signal integrity problem that was referenced first. So in this particular signal integrity problem, it's actually related to what we talked about with mixed signal grounding and splitting planes. If you split planes in a mixed signal PCB and then you route over the split, you lose the return path, or effectively the return path basically exists anywhere in the nearest conductor. And the problem with that is you can create a big loop inductance and that can be a source of EMI or an area to receive EMI. So that's the big challenge here with this type of board. And so what the question refers to is, suppose I have a chip up here on the top layer. And then let's suppose I have another chip down here on the bottom layer. And I need to route a signal from this chip to this chip. How am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna put a via, and the via is gonna just pass through the board, and it'll reach this bottom layer. So I'll put some space here to just show that this is not a continuous set of copper up here on each layer. But the point is that here your signal will go from here, it'll go down through the via, and then it will come out here uh, at this load component. So our signal path is basically like this. So now you have to ask the question, well, where's the ground return path in this arrangement? The problem that I think typically happens with this type of board if it's not designed correctly, or if you're taking a signal and routing through here, is that you don't necessarily know where the return path is if you don't provide it explicitly. So typically when you're routing through here, you would have some return current up here in this area and then some return current up here in this area. However, where is the return current gonna be provided during this transition between layers? So that's the magic question here. And this is where you get into a situation where you don't really know where the return current is at. 
It could be through the nearest decoupling capacitor. Maybe you have some ground here on the upper layer. So let's say that, you know, this is just like a ground pour and this is connected to the ground layer through a via, that's also possible. But the point is that you might get a big piece of, uh, or a big uh, current loop somewhere in this board. And when you have this big current loop somewhere in the board, that creates a potential for EMI. Now, if you do this with say a DC signal, a DC signal doesn't switch. There is no switching action in a purely DC signal. And so because of that, you might create a big magnetic field somewhere here in the board. However, if there's no switching action, it's not radiating as a high frequency radiation. So it's not necessarily a big source of EMI. What is a problem is if you have a digital signal that you source up here and then you route it through the via and then that digital signal appears down here. Well, now you have to ask, where's the return current? So in our talks about return currents, we noted that the return current wants to couple capacitively to the nearest conductor. But here in this signal transition, where is the nearest conductor that can couple capacitively to this? It's effectively nowhere. There is no clear return path. And so maybe there's a via somewhere else, or maybe there's a decoupling capacitor that's connecting power and ground or something like this. And that is where you're going to have that return current exist. So it could be over here. Uh, it could be over here. You, you don't really know if you don't provide it explicitly. And so that's where you get into trouble in the pos and you have the possibility of creating EMI during this fast edge rate as you route a digital signal through here. Here I'm talking about digital signals, but you'd effectively have the same thing if you routed like a high, sp high frequency analog signal through here. You would just have radiation occurring at one frequency instead of occurring at a broad range of frequencies, which is what you would see with this digital signal. So what can we do to change this? Well, one simple solution, because you need to have high speed components, you know, rounded over a ground plane, is you could just move this down to the other side. So you don't even have this problem with the signal transition through a via. You're always routing over the ground plane, and then you'd always have the return current existing in the ground plane. So that's one nice solution. You've effectively created a two layer board for your, sig for your signals, right? Because they can only exist within this region of the stack up. But you could still use the backside of the board for something. Maybe you can use it for connectors. Maybe you can use it for some passives or some power components, um, something like this. So it's not like you're totally ruining your board just because you put all your high speed components on one side. If you are gonna have this stack up, that is what you should do. And you should not necessarily route all the way through the stack up in this way without providing a clear return path. So what's a decent alternative? So the first alternative I'm gonna show you is something that was actually recommended by Rick Hartley in one of his papers. And I really like it. I think he makes a great point because in this stack up, you can actually have really high isolation against external sources of noise. So here we'd have, of course, our surface conductor. And then here we'd have our surface conductor and one of the, this uh, particular stack of them in a draw that is recommended by Rick Hartley, uh, he says to put ground here and ground here. Okay, so basically make this all ground pour. Then in the internal layers, he recommends to use signal slash power. And so this is where you can route power in the internal layer. So you've got a nice clean system where you have ground providing some shielding for signals. The signals can couple back to this ground if you need controlled impedance. And then we can do the same thing down here, signal and power, okay? So as long as you're not routing signals too close to each other in parallel arrangements, creating a potential for crosstalk with a high speed signal, then you're much better off with this type of system if you need to have high isolation against external noise. So this is okay, recommended by an expert as an alternative to the typical four layer stack up. I don't necessarily see any challenges with this other than if you have a lot of components, so if you have a very dense arrangement of components on both layers, depending on the density of your components, you have to remember that these have to connect back to power somewhere or they have to connect to signals somewhere. And so the danger is that you start cutting up this ground plane with a lot of vias. So that's something to watch for. So it may not be the best board if you have a really high density of components or you just have a high number of components. Maybe they're not super dense, but if it's a large number of components, you start cutting up that ground plane, there is the potential to interrupt return paths when you have a signal being routed. It's not the best signal, but when you have a signal 
being routed somewhere internally on one of these layers. And same thing goes here. You know, maybe you have a bunch of components up on this top layer, and when there's a lot of vias connecting back to the signal and power layer or connecting to this other signal layer, you then have that same problem. You're risking cutting up your ground plane. You, you could even be cutting up the power region here. So just watch for that if you are gonna use this board. One of the advantages is that if I do need to make a signal transition up to this layer or even all the way up to this layer, what I can do is I can connect these ground planes with a via. So here if I connect my ground with a via and then I route up to the top layer or I route to this internal layer, remember that the via that's carrying this signal between these two layers has to couple capacitively to some nearby conductor in order to maintain controlled impedance, ensure that there's small loop inductances and to ensure that if there is any EMI, it's low. So this is where you provide that. It's by bridging these two ground layers, which you should be doing anyways, with a large via. And that's what's gonna provide the return current. I'll just draw that arrow here. Provide the return current for this signal that's going up either to this layer or to this layer. And same thing goes if you need to route it down here to this layer. So this is a good alternative to the entry level stack up that you see from a lot of fabricators. I've redrawn my crude stack up here, but what I wanna show you is one more alternative that hopefully gets you to think about how to properly construct a PCB stack up. Now what I'm gonna show here is something where I have ground and then I have signal up here. And then I also have ground here and then I have signal here. So now you're rightfully gonna ask, where is the power? Well, what you can do is you can route power on these top layers. So this is essentially takes the previous stack up and just inverts it, flips it around. So here you have less of a problem with potentially cutting up ground planes with uh, a large number of vias just to send signals up to, uh, up to a component because you've taken all of those transitions that would have happened between this layer and now they just exist on the surface layer. So this is a decent alternative. Again, if we have, let's say a component here, and then I have my signal and I route it this way, where's my return path gonna be? Well, it's gonna capacitively couple back to the nearest conductor, and that would be this internal ground layer. Very nice, okay? Very nice and simple. So my return path is gonna be essentially right there. Now I can also route power and the typical way you would do that on the surface layer is with polygons. You might do it with thick traces. Generally a good way to do that is to just kind of dedicate an area up here for power and uh, very carefully route over a uh, like a power rail or a polygon that's gonna touch all the different components and that will give the power to where it needs to go. Same thing down here. Only thing is you have to make sure that however you're getting power onto the board is being done with vias and not just with like a connector, a connector or pad. That way you can make sure that power isn't just getting here, it's also getting all the way down onto this layer. So if you keep that over on the edge of the board where you're not gonna be routing anyways, you don't have to worry about the fact that you might be cutting up this ground layer just a little bit with some vias in order to get power from here down to here. Now what about signal transitions? What if I need to go through the board and down to the other layer. So I've got a chip up here and then I've got another chip down here and I need to route this signal all the way down to here. Well, then what I can do is break out my via for my signal. So it's just gonna come down like this and then the signal will come down like this and come over here. So here's my signal on the other side. And then of course you wanna rightfully ask, Where's the return current? So here on this layer, it would be right here back to ground. Here it would be right here back to ground. And then again, in this transition region, what you can do is you can put another via that exists alongside this via. This can then carry the return path during the transition. This is really important and it relates to something called, or is something called changing reference layers during routing, okay? When the signal was initially up here, it was referenced to this layer. So that means that the power and the voltage carried by the signal was measured with respect to this ground layer. Its impedance was defined with respect to this ground layer. So that means we used this thickness value T. So then once we get over to this layer, 
What is the new reference layer? Well, the new reference layer can, can now be this layer. And if you make your stack up symmetric, which you should generally do anyways, this will be your T value. So we can, be we can rest assured that we have the same characteristic impedance on this layer as we do on this layer. We'll be measuring the same uh, signal level because we've tied these two grounds together, ideally with a low impedance connection. And so now we can rest assured that, you know, if we define this plane as zero volts, we can also define this plane as zero volts. So this is another good alternative to the previous stack up. Again, we've just taken it and inverted it, nice and simple. So one important point to note with this type of stack up and also with the previous stack up is that you actually don't have a lot of plane capacitance that you might need for power integrity. So plane capacitance is important for power integrity and you could get a decent amount of plane capacitance because you have this thin dielectric layer between the power side and then the ground side. The problem here is that in this type of design, what you're doing is if you're placing components all over the place, you actually have limited room for power. So I wouldn't rely on this type of board for super high speed stuff that requires a lot of plane capacitance or that's gonna have super fast edge rates. However, your typical microcontroller board, maybe a moderate speed FPGA, some other board that uses a lot of digital signaling, it can certainly support that as long as you're careful about planning your return paths. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna use this type of board or the previous type of board, because power integrity is definitely related to signal integrity. And that's one of the things we'll be talking more about in some upcoming videos. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching this video. And hopefully this shows you some of the important concepts to think about when you're putting together a stack up. It's more than just throwing signal on the outer layers and throw in uh, some power on one layer and ground on another layer. Sometimes you need to switch it up and go with an alternative to the standard four layer board in order to make sure that you can support any device, whether it's a high speed PCB or whether it's just simple low speed DC stuff, doesn't really matter. You have to think about these different aspects of stack up design before you start arranging layers. If you wanna build a stack up just like this for your PCB and you want access to the best layout and routing tools, go check out Altium Designer. You can download a free trial from the link in the description. You'll also find some other interesting blogs on Altium's website and they'll help you learn a lot more about some of the stuff that we've been talking about in this video. That's it for today. Thanks everybody. And uh, don't forget to call your fabricator.